are in Arshan right now, which is about 1,400 kilometers from Beijing. It is the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Here to tell you about our trip. This is Josh from beautiful Northeast China, and we are EV now. Here we are at the NEO battery chain station. We went from about half charge to 93% charge in three minutes. I love these battery chain stations, but the next station is just a charging station and it's about 340 kilometers away. So let's see if we can make it. just arrived here to Chifeng and this city is about 340 kilometers from where we left. We filled up to 93%, the battery was at 93%, it set around 500 kilometers and after 340 we have 5% battery left so I think the estimation of how far it can go is extremely hopeful. We used the assisted driving feature along the way. It was really convenient. It's really nice to be able to just kind of take your focus away from driving and just kind of let things go along. And then we found that when it switches lanes, it's a little bit slow, not as uh, responsive or as quick as you would want it to be. If you're a good driver or you really want a smooth ride, you definitely don't want to use that. We need to charge for about an hour, so we're gonna go have some delicious Mongolian food while we charge. Let's go. We got, we got rice, we got vegetables, we got lots and lots of meat. I'm very happy about these things. And one thing I absolutely love about China, oh, oh, like everything. Mm. So now we're headed to Tongliao. We just finished eating and the car is now at 95% charge. All right, so we're just arriving here at Tongliao. We're going to charge for about an hour. The battery was at 2%. So we drove 340 kilometers from the Chifeng uh, city to Tongliao. We're about 40 kilometers away and sitting at around uh, 10%. And then it was just dropping, 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 dropping. And then by the time we got here, 2% definitely making us really, really nervous. We were taking bets to see who would be pushing the car to this charging station. Luckily, we didn't have to. God, my nipples are too hard for this. <laughs> Let's put this on my OnlyFans, okay? Jesus. We're all happy to hear you got soft. We're gonna switch cars. Yeah, I know. So we, we decided that we had too much weight in this car, which was one of the reasons we were not getting enough mileage out of it. You guys gonna, like you tell your guys gonna see it in the, in the doors. And we're gonna, we, we two lighter guys gonna see it in the, in the, in the EC5. See? Yeah. We are now in the city of Ulanhot in northeast China. Drove about 350 kilometers from Tongliao to get here. We changed up our drivers in the car because we really were feeling nervous about uh, how close we were getting to zeroing out the battery. Um, so we had three guys in the car. We switched them out um, for two lighter people because me and the other guy were kind of bigger guys. So the car definitely responded better to the weight. All right, it's 6.30, we need to go to our last stop. It's another 300 kilometers away, and that city is called Arshan or Arksan. We don't really know what the English equivalent is, but it's another small city in uh, Northeast China, so let's get rolling.
We're here in beautiful Arshan and we took this ET5T all the way from Beijing to Arshan, which is around 1,400 kilometers. And taking an electric vehicle in a rural area between charging stations definitely was a hand-wringing experience. We were watching our battery charge go down and watching the mileage just slowly tink down and just being like, oh no. And that was definitely something that was a little hand-wringing. We will show you more of that in the next part. We spent around 15 hours driving from Beijing to Arshan, and along the way, we discovered some things about the seat. So while the comfort package, which is 9,500 RMB, does deliver things like uh, massage, ventilated seats, and things like that, it's still a very sporty seat, which means for someone who's a little bigger like me, my back doesn't really fit in the, the outside wing tips, and there's not a lot of support for my neck. Due to the seat being a little low and the floorboard being a little high, my thighs don't really rest on the seat, which is not comfortable for 15 hours. Uh, it's not that bad in the city, but definitely not something you want to spend 15 hours on. We have a support vehicle with us, a Land Rover, and the difference between those two seats are night and day. Also, the price difference is night and day but uh, that one definitely delivers on comfort. You're, you're really comfortable in those seats, while these seats, not so much. Of course, I have nothing against a four-second car. Everybody loves acceleration, being able to overtake other cars very quickly. However, it is not very convenient to have the limited range due to the dual motors on a vehicle that uh, you wanna take on a long trip. So that, that limit on range definitely is not a plus side. Um, and so that makes the dual motors a little bit of something that's more of an inconvenience than something that's fantastic to have. I think that our trip to Arshan has been a success, but it hasn't been without difficulties. And a number of those things have come from taking this car specifically out into the mountains. And if you check Neo's website, you'll see, go to the mountains, go to the sea with this car. It used to be called Touring, now it's just called T. And this is definitely not a car that I would want to go touring in. Keep in mind that we're traveling in September, in the fall. The temperatures for the battery are really, really optimal because it's not too cold and it's not too hot. And while we did run the AC and play music, we really weren't doing a lot to consume extra electricity. So I really do hope that the range can improve and especially the calculation can improve based on what the people in the car are doing. So I hope that whenever they do an update or at some point they can fix this issue of displaying a range that is not actually going to be drivable because it is extremely inconvenient and anxiety inducing when you don't know how far you can actually drive your car. The range in the range calculator definitely has room for improvement. You fill up the battery and the battery says we have 500 plus kilometers to go. You get to driving and it's actually around 330, 340 and 350 if you're lucky. During this trip, we had two guys that were about uh, 150 kilograms and 100 kilograms myself. And both of us had to get out of the car, take the other car, a support vehicle, because we were too heavy and our range was suffering so bad that we had to change to lighter people in the car. We drove through the pouring rain and during the drive, uh, there was a pretty big pothole. The car hit and nothing bad happened, but we were really scared that there was going to be a flat tire because this car does not actually have any spare tires. And while I wouldn't look forward to changing a spare tire in the rain, there's not even one I could change. So that is something that while it is pretty convenient when you're in China to get roadside assistance, it is cheaper than in America or in Europe, it is really inconvenient that there's not even one in here. The other side of things were the car handled the rain, the car handled some cold temperatures, and the car definitely made it here in one piece. But having to stop every 
330 miles to charge and wait for an hour and 30 minutes for it to charge definitely is not something that uh, keeps your spirits high during the trip. All in all, I would say this car does a great job in handling uh, the city and things that you need to do in the city, but it doesn't do a great job going out to the mountains or going out to the sea unless those things happen to be within 340 kilometer round trip. When we first got the ET5, we definitely did not think we would be giving it a bad review. We've previously driven it before and loved it. However, in that road trip, it was not very fun. Definitely not the way it is intended to be used. Now we have a new one. We sent the other one back to the rental company and they've been generous enough to give us another one so that we can drive it around the city for some further testing. One thing that we cannot say enough is that the ET5T has an excellent starting price. Starting at 298,000 yuan or 228,000 for battery leasing, it has an extremely competitive price. You get the same gorgeous exterior, the same amazing autonomous driving features, and it is as useful and as reliable as the other Neos, as well as having the amazing battery swap feature. With NEO's autonomous driving feature, NOP+, the highway cruising is easier and more convenient than ever before. Taking the ET5T on a road trip was the only plan we had, and during that trip we realized that we might have misunderstood the reason for it. Multi-day trips with an EV where you're going to be long distances between uh, charging stations is just not its intended use. Inner Mongolia is a place that is famous for its vastness and the distance between livable places is quite extreme. So taking the UT5T as an electric vehicle there was a lot like taking a Lamborghini to Antarctica. It's not the way it's intended to be used. So definitely until there are significant uh, improvements in battery storage and the ability to drive long distances on a single charge, I think that for now it is not the intended use of EVs and definitely not the intended use of the ET5T. And that is something we definitely think was an issue with the marketing surrounding the ET5T. It says land, sea, air, not air, but land and sea you can explore. And we definitely did not think that exploring outside of day trips is really the intended use of this car.